Buckle up, folks, because the first criminal trial against Donald Trump is going to begin, and Donald Trump is not taking it very well. A haggard and unwell-looking Donald Trump recording videos of himself just begging for money, saying, please, I need money, please give me the money that follows what took place 24 hours before then when Donald Trump telling for $59.99 that also includes the Pledge of Allegiance in it, the National Anthem, the Declaration of Independence, and the Constitution. I'm not sure if it's the J6 Anthem, but on the Frequently Asked Questions page, it does say that these pages may be very sticky. MidasTouch.com did a deep dive investigative piece into these Bibles that Donald Trump is selling for $59.99. I don't know how you get much lower and pathetic than that. And I think Americans across the country are really starting to pick up onto this, that this is not just Democrats v. Republicans anymore. This is normalcy, democracy, the protection of women's reproductive rights against MAGA Republican weirdness, nonsense, and wannabe fascism. Take a look at Deep Red Alabama, where in a Trump plus one district, a Democrat won by nearly 30 points when internal polls and external polls showed nowhere near that kind of victory. And as we've been talking about, once again, the polls were incorrect there, but we're seeing this trend across the nation. The Democratic candidate ran on women's reproductive rights, the protection of IVF as well, following the Alabama Supreme Court ruling. Donald Trump's lawyer, Alina Haba, meanwhile, was in St. Bart's partying like a rock star. Great job, Mr. and Mrs. Magadonia for funding this lavish lifestyle with personalized bathrobes and Dior bags and Chanel bags and Alina Haba out there partying. She's made somewhere between three and a half and five million dollars losing Jeez. cases for Donald Trump, a four hundred and sixty four million dollar judgment against Donald Trump. An $83.3 million judgment against Donald Trump, a million dollars in sanctions against Donald Trump, $400,000 in sanctions against Donald Trump. The list goes on. Folks, that's not a winning record, but for Alina Haba, she's out there partying, but is that the last hurrah? We'll break it all down here on the Midas Touch Network. I'm Ben Micellis, joined by Brett and Jordy on the Midas Touch podcast and President Biden this evening holding a fundraiser with former presidents Bill Clinton, former President Barack Obama. This event is expected to bring in $25 million. One event alone, that's more than Donald Trump raised in an entire month. And this is just one night. Meanwhile, President Biden is crisscrossing the country, going to essentially all of the swing states, talking about things like reproductive rights, the economy, the Chips and Science Act, while Donald Trump is making posts threatening the judge's daughters, uh, saying that Twitter accounts that are actually fake Twitter accounts belong to Justice Mershon's daughter, just as Donald Trump did with Justice Ngoron's wife in the prior New York Attorney General civil fraud case. Trump is also sitting there in Mar-a-Lago, slumped over, giving himself golf awards for purportedly winning his own golf tournaments. Ghoulish Kim Jong-un style stuff. I'm fired up. How about you? I'm fired up too. This is some event they're having tonight, huh? To bring together the former presidents and to have uh, President Biden there in front of a packed house at Radio City Music Hall raising $25 million for the Biden campaign. It's really just truly astonishing to see right now the differences that we're witnessing between the two campaigns and between the two parties. When you look at the DNC versus the RNC, when you look at the Biden campaign, 
versus the Trump campaign. The two tell very different stories. And of course, money is not everything. We've seen that in the past. We saw that in 2016. But at this time, to have the money advantage that President Biden has and that the Democrats have, and to be looking at this Republican Party, which you see now, like it, it's perplexing. It's almost like they're doing everything that they can to lose. Like at, at least under Rana Romney McDaniel, they were putting together these like uh, Latino outreach centers all across the United States. And they were trying to do some form of voter outreach to people. And now they're like shuttering all those throughout the country. But don't worry, guys. I'm sure Lara Trump has it all mapped. Go, out. Lara, go. I'm sure she's got it all planned just nicely. Jordy, how's it going, man? You go, Lara, not L Lara? I Lara, go Lara. Uh, man, now I'm going to have to think about it. And now it's going to get in my head. Lara, <laughs> I probably go Lara. I probably go Lara. No, I, I, Brett, I, <laughs> I'm stoked. Um, and I think you're right, though, to the point of, of the Biden fundraiser tonight with, with Obama and, and Clinton. And just to see the amount of, of money and donations coming in to support President Biden, right? So it, it, I remember watching the Fox News and all these legacy media companies talking about how, you know, d d is Biden going to be able to energize the base this time around? There's no way he'll be able to. I mean, just look no further than generally like what the numbers are from campaign to campaign as far as the fundraising. I mean, I think that should tell you motivation enough, right? Motivation with your wallet, Ben. What do you say? I say that the media was selling a narrative that was not matching reality. And had it matched reality, that's what I would be talking about. I'd be saying things like, wow, folks, we're in some trouble in all of these primaries. President Biden is hitting under 70 percent. Oh, wait a minute. That's Donald Trump who that's <laughs> happening to. No, when it came to President Biden, he exceeded expectations in all of the primaries. He's set records beating Obama, but the median narrative was one of, we've got to hold back President Biden. We need to prop up Donald Trump because let's face it, we hear all of these stories about all these media companies that covered Donald Trump when he was in office now failing. They love, they love to report on the ins and outs. They want him in office, but what they fail to realize is that if you report, let me give you a secret. I, am I giving a trade secret right here? So come stop on. me. So stop come me. On. Okay. Let's pull that if closer. If you report accurately <laughs> what is happening, that may be the best business model of all like we do here on the Midas Touch Network. Perhaps if you just tell people what's going on and then you back it up with the filings and the videos so people go, oh, you're not lying to me. You're telling me the truth. Maybe you can keep some of your viewers, but look, I think it's a little too late at this point because people know that at this point, all of these media companies were selling these bogus narratives that, dot, that did not meet reality. And what I like is that this community right here, all the Midas Mighty, you know, we're really leading the discussion with our facts, with the facts. And those are our facts, which is what are the filings? What's going on? Give me the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And, you know, a lot of what we talk about on this show, Jordy's got the MidasTouch.com shirt right there because truth is golden. And, and here's the thing. As you start to look at our audience here, right? Yes, you've got progressives. Yes, you've got liberals. Yes, you've got independents. But we have just as many mainstream Republicans, mainstream conservatives, and we all may disagree on certain policy issues, but most of the things that we talk about on this network simply involve, let's support our democracy. Let's support our allies. Let's support NATO. Let's support normalcy. We should not like wannabe authoritarianism. Let's call out weirdness. Like that's what we talk about more than like trying to divide people into tribes. You've got MAGA right now who sees Donald Trump selling fake golden sneakers, weirdo NFTs of himself dressed like astronauts and just strange stuff and selling a Bible with sticky pages for $59.99 that if you delve into the history of this thing, was being sold out of Lee Greenwood's car. Like, it gets even worse uh, than just the fact that this Bible's being sold. Like, that's pretty bad. 
But also you have Lee Greenwood made videos of himself saying, hey, I'm Lee Greenwood here. And by the way, I got these great Bibles right here and, and we're packing them up and he's doing it himself. This thing was created back in 2021. It's like, it seems to be, you know, with all of the one-star reviews of people saying that they wish they could give these sticky Bibles zero-star reviews if they could. And this is the kind of person that Donald Trump goes back. I want to partner with this. I'm going to put my name behind this. And here's the thing that I always say. This shouldn't be like a democratic thing to look at this and go, yeah, I don't want former presidents selling Bibles for $59 and 99 cents. Eh, that should just be all of us. We should say, uh, we don't want that. We should all look at, you know, someone like Trump partnering with someone like Lee Greenwood and go, wait a minute. We got to give this guy the nuclear codes, and he didn't do due diligence about this product to begin with. And you're out there selling Bibles and weirdos. Uh, you know, let's let's not let's not do that. Or the fact that you've got Donald Trump, you know, making these videos of himself that he's posting. He goes, please, I need money. You, you rush me. Uh, the Marxist, fascist, communists, a uh, deranged prosecutors. They're all coming. They're coming after us. And then meanwhile, you juxtapose that to Alina Haba in St. Bart's, who's gotten somewhere between three and a half of five million dollars from the PACs for legal fees to lose all of these cases with like the champagne stuff. And it's her friend named Siggy Flicker. I mean, just think about that by itself. Who's the one like we didn't have to do. I didn't have to like have a P.I. go to St. Bart's to track this down. They're out there posting photos. Of, go to the last one with her in the gold chain. Alina Haba wearing a Trump gold chain with some rapper named Forgaccio Blow who raps about <laughs> killing his ex-girlfriends oh. and, and dismembering the ex-girlfriends and throwing their body parts in the water in Miami. I kid you not. Then you have Alina Haba staying at like the most expensive villas in St. Bart's at the Eden Rock Hotel. She's gifted her friends individualized with their names on it, um, Dior bags with all of these goodies. And you have hardworking, there she, there she is right there. And you've got hardworking Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Magadonia. This is reverse Robin Hood. They go and they steal from the poor. They give to the rich to fund their lavish lifestyles at Mar-a-Lago and in St. Bart's. And they are quite literally laughing at their supporters. They are mocking their own people. And then their own people take it. Their own people are like, oh, we're, we're in this together. You ain't, you ain't in St. Bart's, okay? You ain't, you ain't Mar-a-Lago. By the way, that you know, do we have the do we have the video of her with the champagne bottles and things like that? Because this lunch right here in St. Bart's, by the way, cost more than you probably have made in a year. And guess what? You funded it. This is what you're funding. Here, play the clip. Oh, Ben, Ben, Ben. Oh, raise the roof, Magnolia. Ben, we need to, we need to, we need to be fair. We need it. We, we need it. We need to be fair. Let, yeah. me realize, let me realize in a little bit. Let me realize. Mm -hmm. Alina Haba was clearly doing GOP voter outreach efforts using the donors' money in St. Bart's. Mm -hmm. You know, probably a lot of Americans there. Probably trying to connect with you know the real America out there in St. Bart's, right? Like, uh, and I so and, and okay. we saw Haba Ben. To your point exactly, <laughs> she makes fun of them to their face. She makes fun of the MAGA donors to their face. Do you guys remember the Charlie Kirk event? Like not too long ago, when she stood on stage and she's like, "I bet a lot of you don't know, I was sanctioned a million dollars," and she was like laughing about it. On on stage and the crowd was like chuckling like nervously -ish a little it's bit the weird she goes on stage and then flaunts it in their face that she's taking their money and using it for whatever she wants and losing and his historians and are going to look back at this and they're going to be like what the, like what are what are kids learning about this time period seeing these weirdo videos of trump hawking bibles and stuff going to think it's the weirdest crap on the historians i mean our fan like our kid my like my son's gonna ask me in yeah. a couple of years when he could dad what was going on in 2020 
2020 and 2024. It's... Like, I just don't understand. Like, was it really that crazy? Yes, Elijah, it was that crazy, buddy. And now I want to make this point too. Now it's not just the MAGA donors who it's not just the Trump people's money who's going into Alina Haba's pocket here. This is what Republican donors are now paying for because the RNC and Donald Trump's world have kind of merged into one at this point. So you have to understand that if you are a Republican voter out there and you are donating your money thinking that you're helping to elect Republicans, you're not. You're donating money to help Alina Abba go on another vacation and buy her friends Dior bags. I mean, that's what we've come down to. And that's why what you said, Ben, before, it drives me so mad when people try to turn this into some sort of left or right issue and say, oh, well, you guys uh, certainly went after Donald Trump and Alina Habba on that episode. It seems like you guys must be like a far left. What are you talking about? Stop making this a left-right thing. This is an American thing, okay? It's normal versus weird. It's reality versus insane. Let's actually look at this through the prism of what is going on and stop trying to make these BS labels. I mean, the fact hey, that hey, we hey, all here sitting touch. here Why agree... <laughs> As a Midas touch, why don't you identify yourself to everybody as a far left group? Perhaps you should identify yourself as a far left media entity. There are all of these organizations that come it's, around. It's, 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 it's an actual email that I got the other day. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, you are you are misrepresenting to your audience because you are far left. And I go. There's really nothing far left that, you know, if, if if protecting basic human rights is a far left thing and me looking at Donald Trump selling a Bible for fifty nine dollars and ninety nine cents that Lee Greenwood himself packages from the back of his truck. And if that's now like a, a far left position, I guess then so be it. But and Ben, if you're saying that about the things that we're speaking about, then you have to say that about Liz Cheney, who's speaking about the same sorts of things. Then you have to say that about Ad Adam Kinzinger, who are saying the same sorts of things. OK, like we, we, what we've done here and what we're all doing, what you are all doing is we're actually building a broad coalition that spans the political that goes across the traditional political spectrum. And I think that's what's so cool about this community. And I can't tell you how many times that I'm out, you know, in the real world at the supermarket where somebody comes over to me and they say, I'm a Republican or I was a Republican and I cannot vote for this party anymore. Like I, I, I couldn't vote for Trump last time or even I voted for Trump in 2016 and 2020. I don't know what the heck I was doing. Like it was so many of those people follow this network. I don't think a lot of people like realize that in these media who wants to just label people in a certain way. Well, look, the, the people recognize that. And right. so that's where I'm like, you know, I, I'm like, wow, like, we have a lot of Nikki Haley supporters. We even have a lot of DeSantis supporters. Think about that. We have a lot of independents. We have, of course, progressives and we have liberals. And there's kind of this um, unspoken compromise, if you will, here. And, and I don't think this exists on a lot of other networks. And no. the compromise is, look, we're going to disagree on a lot of policy very soon. OK, we're good with that. But right <laughs> now, what we need to focus on is the guy with orange makeup. Uh, hawking $59.99 Bibles and this haggard guy who's quite making videos of himself begging for money every day. Here, pl play this clip of a very haggard Donald Trump. This was after doing the video of himself selling the Bible. He then made a video of himself. Just, I guess, just, just give me the money. Just, just, just give me money, please. Here, play this clip. But the Soros-backed prosecutors and politicians, Democrats, all that are after us. We have to go out, we have to fight. They're communists, they're fascists, they're lunatics, and they just don't stop. They don't know how to give up, and you gotta hand it to them for that. But that's the only thing you gotta give them credit for. They're bad people, they're against our country, they don't want our country to make it. There's something wrong with them, but we're fighting, we're winning, you see what's going on. So whatever you can do to help financially would be fantastic because we have to beat it. If it's $5 or $10 or $100, whatever you can do. Look, the fascist, the communists, the Marxist, the lunatic prosecutors are coming after you. So please give us some money so we can do this. It's all fear-based. Like it's, oh, it's Brett, all. Brett, you missed the beat. The that, beat that, was that was the beat. That was the beat. That was the, the beat. beat. I knew Abba. it. Yeah, the so beat was. So you can was... do this.
Oh, oh I, I, I see. I was I was doing the back end work of the podcast. Wait, <laughs> set me up again. Set me up again. Ready? Men in black. No one saw that. Okay, here we go. All right. You got you got Donald Trump saying we got to defeat no. the Marxists. We got to defeat the fascists and the lunatic prosecutors yeah. who are coming after us. Yes, I'm referring to you, Mr. and Mrs. Magadonia. They're come Soros. Mm -hmm. They're coming for you. So yeah. give me money so I can do this. Well, I nailed it. I nailed I nailed that. You nailed see, that. like we we didn't even have to discuss it beforehand. I just no, hey, oh, you get a Dior bag, you get a Croc Birkin Hermes seventy thousand dollar bag. Hey, hey. The live. so so everybody, we, we, after uh, the episode ends today, we're going to be doing on Midas Touch uh, Patreon uh, an exclusive after show where you can join us. You ever wanted to meet me, Brett, and Jordy? We have a secret Zoom link that's posted right now on patreon.com slash Midas Touch. You go there, you sign up to patreon.com slash Midas Touch. We will do a lightning round Q&A where you'll just list the questions. We'll go super quick, try to answer all of your questions. But if you ever wanted to meet us, in a Zoom, patreon.com slash Midas Touch. Sign up right now. Mr. and Mrs. Magadonia. Hey, <laughs> oh, hey. First ad break. Hey, Dior bag for you, Hermes for you. We'll cut, to the, cut to the ad. This episode of the Midas Touch podcast is brought to you by Manacora Honey, also known as Honey with Superpowers. Let me share something sweet with you, and I mean really sweet. It's something that's become a staple in my routine, and I think you are going to love it. I'm talking about Manacora Honey. When I say honey, you might be picturing those bear-shaped bottles in the supermarket, but that is not what this is. Manacora Honey is single origin, rich, creamy, and the most delicious honey you've ever had. It's supercharged with unique antioxidants and prebiotics, and is three times Times more than your average honey. Manakora honey supports immunity, aids digestion, boosts energy, and helps balance inflammation. It's a game changer, and all you need is one to three teaspoons a day. On top of that, Manakora honey has a natural antibacterial compound called MGO only found in Manuka honey. So if you're looking for something simple and delicious to add to your wellness routine, we found your new wealthy habit. And now it's easier than ever to try Manacora honey with the starter kit. Just head to manacora.com slash Midas to get $25 off. The starter kit comes with an MGO 850 plus Manuka honey, five honey travel sticks, a wooden spoon, plus a guidebook. Now, I love the jar and squeeze bottle, but the extra pack of compostable honey sticks is perfect for whenever you're on the go. You could bring them with you when you're traveling or need a quick snack running errands, and they are the perfect energy boost if you're out for a run or at the gym. That's M-A-N-U-K-O-R-A dot com slash Midas to get $25 off your starter kit. This is the ultimate honey. Indulge and try some honey with superpowers from Manacora. Look, this stuff is amazing and really provides the pump I've been looking for. I look forward to Manacora every morning. Make sure you click the link in our description or head to manacora.com slash Midas and try some out today. I've been trying to save money for a while, but it seemed like my bank account was stuck. Thankfully, I heard about Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. It turns out I had a bunch of subscriptions that I was paying for that I just completely forgot about. Rocket Money helped me cancel some of them, and now I'm finally starting to see my account balance going up. With Rocket Money, I have full control over my subscriptions and a clear view of my expenses. Now, I could see all of my subscriptions in one place. And if I see something I don't want, Rocket Money can help me cancel it with a few taps. I love how their dashboard shows me this month's spending compared to last month, so I can clearly see my spending habits. Plus, they'll help me create a custom budget and keep my spending on track. Rocket Money will even help try to lower and negotiate your bills by up to 20%. All you have to do is submit a picture of your bill and Rocket Money, well, they take care of the rest. They'll deal with customer service for you. 
Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash Midas Touch. That's rocketmoney.com slash Midas Touch. Rocketmoney.com slash Midas Touch. Let's go. I love these sponsors. I love these pro-democracy sponsors. Folks, links in the description. Y'all know the drill. Rocket Money. Shout out Rocket Money, man. They've been a sponsor with us for a while. And so is Manicora Honey, which I absolutely love. Delicious. Yeah, Check it out right now. Donald Trump is attacking Justice Juan Mershon's daughter. Justice Juan Mershon is the judge presiding over the Manhattan District Attorney criminal case scheduled to start April 15th. Trump tried to delay that trial. He failed in delaying the trial. And now he goes back to a predictable playbook. But for this predictable playbook, I think it's also important that we talk about the anatomy of a MAGA conspiracy and how it all goes down. Because when I read Donald Trump's post about Justice Mershon's daughter purportedly posting things on a Twitter or X account where there's already just a deluge of disinformation and fake accounts and bots and all of these things, I thought to myself, is this deja vu? Didn't I see this happen already? And I did with Justice and Goran. And then I peeled back the layers and we did a hot take on this earlier. And what Donald Trump does is in his inner circle, the leaders of the MAGA movement, it's shocking that you even call them that, but they are, are people like Laura Loomer. And Laura Loomer purports to be a journalist. That's how she um, describes herself. But she puts out there all of this disinformation over and over again. So she's the type of person who is really one of the first to start that Taylor Swift and the Super Bowl was all a democratic psyop to try to hypnotize the nation. That was a Laura Loomer original that was then pushed out by others in MAGA. Back in the Iowa primaries, Laura Loomer said that DeSantis and others who were in the deep state, that's what they consider, um, were manipulating the weather patterns to make sure that uh, Donald Trump would not uh, meet expectations there. And Laura Loomer is also the person who uh, would say things about Justice Ngoron's wife like this. Don't worry, B-word. I archived your entire account before you could lock it in or delete it. I have it all. And then she uh, puts an account that she claims is just in. I did this expose and found Justice Ngoron's wife's account. The only thing there is this account that has the same name as Justice Ngoron, his wife is actually not Justice Ngoron's wife's account. So the uh, court administrative PR person, um, Al Baker, had to come out with a statement and said that Twitter account does not belong to Justice Ngoron's wife. Same thing here now with Justice Mershon's daughter, Lauren. Lauren Loomer is the one who came, you know, said that, look, here's the account at Lauren M426. And then Laura Loomer goes breaking. Judge Mershon's daughter, Lauren Mershon, just blocked me and locked her account after I exposed her. Don't worry, Lauren. I archived your entire account and screenshots are forever, you evil. And then she says the B word with a kiss emoji hashtag loomered right there and the same court administrator al baker who had to come out with the statement about justice and goran's wife put out a statement and said no this account does not belong to justice mershon's daughter it is a manipulated account and in both the cases of justice and goran and justice mershon donald trump then takes what loomer does and then he posts. So this is Angoran, what Trump did. Wife of New York judge in civil case against Trump has been attacking ex-president on social media. 
And all of these articles after Loomer does her report are written about this. All of these posts by the bank account are written. And then Trump posts that on his social media platform to his followers. And there's never any retraction or, hey, we got it wrong. No, it, that becomes the narrative that's pushed by the right wing. And same thing here, right? You know, where Donald Trump just attacked Justice Mershon's daughter using Laura Loomer's story about this Twitter account, which is not Judge Mershon's daughter's account. And Trump goes, Judge Juan Mershon, who's suffering from an acute case of Trump derangement syndrome, whose daughter represents crooked Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Adam Shifty Schiff, and other radical liberals, has just posted a picture of me behind bars. Her obvious goal, and it makes it completely impossible for me to get a fair trial, has now issued another illegal, un-American, unconstitutional order as he continues to try to take away my rights right there. And look, I want to show you this video of Donald Trump and Laura Loomer sitting together. There's numerous videos at Trump rallies and events where he praises Laura Loomer. She's one of the closest people to him. So the same way we showed you those photos of Lee Greenwood selling the Bibles out of his truck and Donald Trump partnering with Greenwood to sell Bibles for $59.99. You also are the, you keep, you know, Ron Filipkowski at MidasTouch.com did a deep dive into, and he did this a few months ago, and I told him this morning to reprise this article. If Trump were to ever be elected again, I don't think that's going to happen, and you all are going to make sure that we get out the word about democracy and the importance of our democracy, but who would be the types of people that he would give cabinet positions to? People like Marjorie Taylor Greene, people like Laura Loomer. Now, I do not think that it is hyperbole to say that Laura Loomer would get a major position in a future Trump administration. And it would be people like Laura Loomer who would get key positions. Would she be appointed as the transportation secretary, the treasury secretary, um, HUD? Would she be appointed secretary of state? Would she be given uh, the uh, a position as ambassador to the United Nations? I think that's all in play. I think if you ask Donald Trump, which the media don't ask him questions, nor does he really go on any networks that ask him difficult questions, I'm sure he would say that he would consider her for a top position. Um, and I don't think there's a controversial statement that, yes, Laura Loomer is in play to become the secretary of state in Donald Trump. And these are the people he surrounds himself with. Now, I'm not going to show you the video of Laura Loomer in 2018, where she chains herself to the Twitter offices, wearing a star of David and saying the fact that her account on then Twitter was uh, suspended because of the disinformation that she was posting. She compared her, what she was going through to a Holocaust. I'm not going to play that clip, but it exists. It's out there. You can watch it for yourself. I'll play this clip right here of Laura Loomer sitting next to Donald Trump. And there are lots of videos like this and, and Trump co-signing her as an important person for him. And Laura Loomer's the type of person, if Trump were to be elected, who would make decisions over your family, over your grandchildren, over your children, over your community. She would have power over you. This is who you're giving power to because I don't want us to get numb to the very uh, reality of our situation that, that these are life and death choices. You know, this is not WWE cosplay fascism, although that's what it looks like. These are very serious times. This is a very serious election. This is a, a decision that we make that ultimately is a life or death decision. Here's the video of Trump and Laura Luba. Let's play the clip. Hey, everybody. We're here at Bedminster. I'm with the greatest president ever, President Donald Trump, who is killing it right now. There's a new poll out, right? You're crushing it. You're up over 50 points. And uh, it's a beautiful day here. Beautiful club. It's my first time here at Bedminster. Well, it's great to have you. And you've been really very special. You work hard and you are a, uh, you are a very opinionated lady. I have to tell you that. And in my opinion, I like that. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. all of your support. And you've been terrific. And everybody appreciates your support. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Lot. Thank you so much for inviting me to sit with you today. Pleasure. You're the best. I love you. You don't get much weirder than that. I mean, although you have the photo of Alina Haba wearing 
the Trump gold necklace with. Uh, so you you may have kind of equally weird. And and again, this is what the Republican Party is. And so that is not normal. That's that's MAGA, but that's not normal. Like this isn't again, you know, a democratic, you know, issue. I'm just looking at that and I'm going, what the heck even is that? And uh, you know, when people like Liz Cheney are doing that as well. And Brett, I want you to talk about that in a moment. One point I want to also bring up though, as we're talking about court updates, there was a Trump's lawyers can't even get their story straight on what they're arguing, right? We have the Supreme Court oral argument uh, in Trump's claim where he's asserting absolute immunities coming up and right around the corner as well, like in April 25th. And there Trump is arguing that his conduct was not campaigning. It was official presidential responsibilities in the outer limits of of Trump's Article II presidential authority when he tried to overturn a free and fair election. Obviously, that's not the case, but I'm just letting you know that's his argument before the Supreme Court. Well, Donald Trump's lawyer in Fulton County, Georgia, Steve Sadow, argued that it was actually a First Amendment issue as part of Donald Trump's campaigning, that it was not official responsibility. It was campaign speech, and therefore, Fulton County Judge Scott McAfee should dismiss the case based on First Amendment defenses for campaigning that Donald Trump has. So in Fulton County, Georgia, this is First Amendment campaigning. In Washington, D.C., federal criminal, it's absolute presidential immunity um, for official presidential conduct. Just think about that right there. And um, it just goes to show you that he will uh, torture and manipulate uh, the laws, the Constitution, whatever, where, wherever it suits him. And that is what we are dealing with. But again, we've got that April 15th trial coming up, and that will be the first criminal trial. I think that case will be done by June, the latest. And I think before the end of the summer, Trump will be a felon. Brett, Liz Cheney's been pretty busy, huh? Yeah, Liz Cheney's been busy. And, you know, I, I referenced this earlier uh, today that it's interesting that we find ourselves, it shows you, and it's a sign of the times, right, where we find ourselves in the same circle now as people like Liz Cheney, as Republicans like Adam Kinzinger. And it's important to cast a big tent. And I like to see that Liz Cheney is going out there and she is rallying Republicans and independents and other moderates against Donald Trump. She's could be very impactful in this space. And I think the Republicans are really going to end up regretting the way they treated Liz Cheney based on how she's going to be able to mobilize these voters that quite frankly, Republicans on a near daily basis in including Donald Trump, say, you know what? We don't want you. If you consider yourself a moderate Republican, get the hell out of our party. We are MAGA only. We are only for Magadonians here. And I mean, did you guys see this crowd yesterday in Des Moines? Liz Cheney Mass speaking in Des Moines, a massive, I mean, look at that. That's more people than go to these Trump events at this event for totally. Liz Cheney over here. And it's absolutely incredible to see that sort of enthusiasm for somebody like Liz Cheney who was ousted from her own party. And so what we're going to see now is for the next six or so months, we're going to see Liz Cheney going out there and speaking to moderate voters, speaking to uh, moderate conservatives, Republicans, independent voters, and speaking to them against the threat of Donald Trump and for President Biden. And she's not gone to the point where she said something like, I endorse President Biden, but she may as well have based on her statements that she made yesterday in Des Moines, where she basically, to sum up what she said, she goes, you know what, like, this isn't about policy, right? We could recover from bad policy. We could recover from policy disagreements. What we cannot recover from is somebody destroying our democracy. Listen to Liz Cheney say it for herself yesterday in Des Moines. He will appoint people who will do his bidding. He will appoint people, um, and if they are nervous about doing his bidding, he'll offer them pardons. Um, and and he won't he won't leave office. I mean, just think about. We know he tried once not to leave office, um, and and he will have no incentive to guarantee a peaceful transfer of power 
and to leave office if he's elected again. So I, I do think it's very important for people, as frustrated as I know people get sometimes with um, you know policy disagreements you might have, um, and I certainly have policy disagreements with the Biden administration, I know the nation can survive bad policy. We can't survive a president who is willing to torch the Constitution. And that right there is the definition of, of patriotism. And by the way, if if the roles were reversed, if there were a Democratic president who is like Donald Trump, who wanted to terminate the Constitution and overthrow our democracy, you know, I would say similar things myself, you know, because it's more important than that. It's not about us. It's about the country. It's about the long term stability of our country and our freedom. And the repudiation of Liz Cheney of these MAGA Republicans is really summed up, I mean, this week could not have made more of a contrast between kind of this battle between normalcy and insanity and what we're seeing with this Republican Party now, which is just like full of gaslighting and lies and some of the most blatant racism I, I've ever seen in my entire life that's just being pushed out in a way that is just horrifying. I mean, when I logged on to the internet all week this week and I was seeing what big people in the Republican Party were saying about issues. It was one of the most, dis honestly, one of the most disturbing experiences I have had, not only covering politics over these past few years, but in my entire life, just watching things happen in this country and thinking that we were going on a trajectory towards more equality, towards more diversity. But you see Republicans are just these, the racism, the fear mongering has just ratcheted up to new levels. And you saw this even today, we saw Michigan State Representative Matt Maddock. He made this post about, quote, illegal invaders coming into the country. Let me show you this because this is like especially, especially sick. Um, let me find the post. Matt Maddock said the following, if I could find it. And as, you, as you find it, though, Brett, then it was reposted and amplified by like the top people in Republican politics. Yeah, this is everybody. In and he. And, and, and here it is right now. Here's Matt Maddock. Remember, this is a Michigan state representative, Matt Maddock. He goes, happening right now, three buses loaded up, just loaded up with illegal invaders at Detroit Metro. Anyone have any idea where they're headed with their police escort? That was then retweeted by the, the Michigan state GOP chair. You thought Christina Caramo, remember her, everybody? She was the one talking about, what was the animal, Ben, that Christina Caramo would speak about? She would talk about demons and she would talk about, they weren't ferrets. I don't even know. No, they but weren't they, crows, were they? I mean, no, it was crazy. I'll, after the next break, I'm going to find the clip. <laughs> Uh, but this this is so awesome. it was a it was a possum awesome. that was eaten by a hawk. She goes, she goes, I saw a possum that was eaten by a hawk. Don't, I don't, don't about give Ben an excuse to play this clip, Brett. Anyway, she was too crazy, but this person, evidently not too crazy, who filled her who fills her role now, this Justin Barclay, who retweeted with an eyeball emoji uh, that tweet of Matt Maddox saying illegal invaders at Detroit Metro. Well, you know what this actually was, everybody? This was the Gonzaga college basketball team arriving in Detroit because it's March Madness, the NCAA basketball tournament. That's why they were there. That's who these people were. They were basketball players for Gonzaga because they're hosting March Madness in Detroit. And they turned this into this whole fear mongering that they are, quote, illegal invaders coming into your country. Oh, everybody should be so afraid. And when they get called out on this stuff also, their reactions also tell you everything. And it tells you that they really don't function, like truth does not matter to them. They just want to scare you. They want to make you feel bad. And look at look at the immaturity of this response from Matt, Matt Maddock here. He goes, somebody goes to him, probably teams from the NCAA Men's Sweet 16 playing on Friday and Sunday, to which Matt Maddock responds, sure, Kami, good talking point. So there he gets the facts. These are actually the college basketball players who are here for the most watched college basketball tournament on the planet right now that's taking place in your state. Matt Maddox goes, sure, Kami, 
good talking point. And it sums up this whole Republican mindset. And it's why it just infuriates me so much also beyond the level of politics. It's why it's not left, right, all these labels. This is just, these are people who are lying to you. And I'm sick of tired of the lies. We saw this all week with the GOP also, as we saw the ship uh, go into the bridge, the, the, oh the key goodness. bridge in yep. Baltimore, the immediate reactions, right? First off, you had Republicans rushing to blame DEI. They were blaming anybody who had dark skin color. They were blaming the LGBTQ community for it. They were blaming Biden. I saw some of these Republicans blame Ukraine somehow for this. And then the Baltimore mayor came out, Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott, and he comforted his city. He had some great words for the people of Baltimore in the early morning hours of speaking at like 3 a.m. or something like that to the people of Baltimore and these right-wing influencers, the comments that they made towards him was some of the most disgusting stuff I have ever witnessed in my entire life, just purely, just disgustingly racist. Look at some of these comments you have here. This is Baltimore's DEI mayor commenting on the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge. It's going to get so, so much worse prepare accordingly. Like, this is just not, this is just, these are Nazis. These are, this is just Nazi rhetoric right here. Calling him a DEI mayor because he's black. He got over 70% of the vote in, vote in Baltimore. This is the people's choice for the mayor of Baltimore. It's the most disgusting behavior. Here are some other right-wing influencers here. This mayor asked me for a dollar this morning, said this racist. This other racist said, WTF, look like they scooped him up from the basketball court where he slings. Somebody else wrote, this is Baltimore's actual mayor, to which somebody wrote, looks like the kind of guy who would try to bum a cigarette from you outside the gas station. Another MAGA influencer wrote, probably smoked a blunt after the press conference. Someone else wrote, no wonder the crime rate is through the roof. Vote ghetto and get trash. Another person said, I could barely understand a word he says. When you're voting Republican now, it's why so many normal Republicans have left the party, because that's right. what you're voting for. That's what you're voting for. And I was happy to see Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott appear yesterday on Joy Reid. And I want to give him the final word here on this issue because I think he summed it up better than I can. I will allow you, uh, Mayor Scott, if you choose to do so, to respond to the tomfoolery uh, and attacks on you for having the nerve to be black and also a mayor. Well, I think, listen, uh, uh I know, and we all know, and you know very well, that black men and young black men in particular have been the boogeyman for those who are racist and think that only uh, uh, straight, wealthy white men should have a saying anything. We've been the boogeyman from them since the first day they brought us to this country. And what they mean by DI, in my opinion, is duly elected incumbent. Uh, we know what they want to say, uh, but they don't have the courage to say the N-word. And the fact that I don't uh, believe in their uh, untruthful and wrong ideology and I am very proud proud of my heritage and who I am and where I come from scares them uh, because me being at my position means that their way of thinking their way of life of being comfortable and suffering and while everyone else suffers is going to be at risk and they should be afraid because that's my purpose in life very well said right there powerful indeed I want to talk also about President Biden crisscrossing the country going to all of these swing states, and uh, he'll be uh, holding and hosting a fundraiser this evening in New York with uh, former President Obama, former President Clinton, where they're expected to raise $25 million this evening in one night. Compare that to Donald Trump, who raised $20 million last month. Also, if we want to focus on actual data, rather than polls. And, and and by the way, we don't focus on polls here, but the polls are starting to trend in the right direction. I just want to say that, but I don't want to really focus on the polls. Um, I want to focus on the data, which is in yet another uh, election, a special election, this one in Alabama, in a Trump district in uh, Huntsville, plus one, uh, the Democratic candidate flipped the red seat to blue, running on reproductive rights and IVF. We'll talk about what went down there as well. We also want to talk about uh, a new movie that we are producing here. It's called Against All Enemies, and it comes out tomorrow. 
and the Midas Touch Network is an executive producer, and it's actually a very good movie. Well, I'll say, or today, if you're listening on audio, it's out now. If you're listening on audio, I am now. very proud right, of this movie. We did it with Ken Harba and others. We'll talk about more. It's been winning awards across the world. We'll talk about that. And if you want to ask us about that, you can do that at patreon.com slash Midas Touch. As soon as this show ends, we have a secret link that's posted for our patrons, patreon.com slash Midas Touch. You'll go there, you'll click the link there, and then you'll have, if you wanted to ever meet me, Brett, and Jordy in a virtual Zoom meeting in a more intimate setting, go to patreon.com slash Midas Touch. And uh, before we go to our last ad break, I do want to thank all of our mods. They do a lot of great work keeping the conversation civil. So thank you, moderators. Thank you to our mods. We'll be right back after this quick break. Hey, Midas Mighty. So a little while ago, we had the idea that we wanted to sell the best pro-democracy merchandise in the game for the Midas Touch Network. And candidly, we had no idea where to even get started. That's why I'm so glad that we found Shopify. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business, from the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million order stage? Shopify's there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever, whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, and sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. We use Shopify at store.midastouch.com, and it has completely revolutionized our business. It allows us to easily manage our shop, view analytics, provide the best customer service, and streamline our entire online shopping experience from A to Z. We wouldn't be able to bring you all the products you know and love without Shopify, and we can't speak highly enough about it. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S., and Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds and Rothy's and Brooklinen and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way, like they were there for us here on the Midas Touch Network. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Shopify, and we can attest to that. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash Midas, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash Midas to take your business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash Midas. Shout Brad. out Shopify, y'all. Oh, yeah, I should say great work, Shopify. Thank you for great, great read, Ben. Great read. Thank you, George. Love it. Love Brett, it. in contrast to all this MAGA madness, you've got President Biden looking, behaving, being presidential, talking about the issues that actually matter to the American people. And as I noted, hosting a fundraiser, even Charlie Kirk is very, very worried about this. <laughs> Take it away, Brett. Yeah, no, there's a big fundraiser tonight, like we said, in Radio City. It's a record breaker, folks. This is never there's never been a more lucrative political fundraiser in American history. The campaign is announcing it expects to bring in twenty five million dollars in campaign contributions. So not only is that more than Donald Trump raised for the entire month of February, like we were saying before, but it's more than double. More than double what Donald Trump raised in January, just to put that into some perspective. Um, big news there on the front. Like I said before, like it's not all about money in politics these days. Uh, as we've seen, we can't rely on having that money in the bank, but it's a good sign, certainly, to have that sort of firepower and to see. President Biden out there crisscrossing the country, hitting all these states while Donald Trump like still doesn't even have like any events on his calendar and is running this real sort of basement campaign, which is funny to see the Biden campaign flip the script right now on uh, Donald Trump here. And the Biden campaign actually did this hilarious post earlier today showing the Donald Trump schedule, which I thought was pretty funny. I'll show it for you right now. They got here. Here's the, the fake Donald Trump calendar. They said, President Biden traveled across the country, visiting every major battleground state in a 
18 days, Trump. And then they have the calendar from 8 to 10 a.m., hair from 10 a.m. to noon, hide in basement from noon to one, lunch with white nationalists at 1 p.m., uh, try to sell special Trump approved Bibles to pay bills at 1.30, uh, Project 2025 planning call from 2 to 5 p.m., hide in basement at 5 p.m., uh, sit in golf cart, uh, 6 p.m. through 10 p.m. or through 11 p.m., uh, hide in basement. And then at around uh, 10 o'clock, while Donald Trump's in the basement, begin posting disturbed, confused, typo-ridden rants. <laughs> so <laughs> good. So they're, good. Yeah, they're, 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 they're ruthless. really good. Ruthless. They're, 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 they're totally ruthless. And, uh, <laughs> and, and you know, and, and one of the good things now is we're seeing all this momentum now with the economy. And this is something, you know, we've talked about it, all, all the progress that we've seen on the past few shows, um, for, for the past few months, we've seen the trajectory. And we've sort of hinted at this too, at the end of last year, that we were going to see this sort of turnaround. So we're going to break it all down in everybody's favorite segment, yes. folks. It's the NetSuite Know Your Numbers Minute. This is the NetSuite by Oracle Know Your Numbers Minute. All right, let me break oh. it down, folks. I, I've been getting requests for the Netflix for the NetSuite Know Your Numbers. When we, by the way, when we don't run the NetSuite Know Your Numbers Minute, it, folks DM me and they're like, "Hey, are are they? Are we? What's going um, on? The, the, Why we the, the, the comments I get, like the my replies online, are like half trolls and half people saying we want Please, more. Put in NetSuite. the comments right now what you think of the NetSuite Midas Minute. And and you know why? Because you get a you get a quick break breakdown and everything is going on. Like, did you guys know that U.S. consumer sentiment is now at its highest levels since July 2021? Yep, that's right. You heard me correctly. The University of Michigan's final March index rose to 79.4 as long run inflation views eased to 2.8 percent. Consumers are feeling positive now about job and wage growth, the strong stock market gains, and expectations that inflation will continue to ease. Speaking of that strong stock market we were speaking about. The S&P 500 set another record high closing today at 5,254. The Dow also set a record close uh, today at 39,807. I think records are a, a good thing, uh, especially when you compare them to the past. I'll give you this one example. S&P 500 today, 5,254. You hear all these things, are you better off than you were four years ago? Four years ago, it closed at 2,500. 40. Wow. So a big difference, I would say. And I should know with NetSuite, you get tailored reporting features that allow businesses to focus on specific stock market indicators relevant to their sector. So you're always one step ahead of the game. Plus, the U.S. economy grew at a 3.4% annualized rate in Q4. That's up from the 3.2% rate estimated a month ago. Once again, Good to have higher numbers in these uh, respects. And NetSuite provides customization to help you monitor all this growth, such as customizable dashboards to monitor specific economic indicators that impact your business. And there you have it, folks. You get all the info right there in your NetSuite Know Your Numbers Minute. That was the NetSuite by Oracle Know Your Numbers Minute. Do you know your own numbers for your business? Download NetSuite's ultimate KPI checklist right now at netsuite.com slash Midas. Definitely check out that KPI checklist. The link is right in the description of the audio and the YouTube. Just click that link right now. Just check out their website. It's freaking awesome, y'all. That's uh, a game changer for business. Uh, if you have business, you have to. Like it's, it, you're, you're hurting yourself if you don't. I will, I, I will say that. I love being able to deliver the good news here. Like I, I'm happy I got like the good news today. It's, it's always yeah. great to get the good news segments because Democrats won big. And they did not just win big anywhere. They won big in Alabama. Bama. Like how much more data, how much more data do we need folks? When we see results like this coming out of places like Kansas, when we see these results in swing states like Wisconsin, when we see results like this coming out of places like Alabama, Democrat Marilyn Lands defeated Republican Teddy Powell in a special election for Alabama House District 10 by a whopping 25 points. 25 points, 62.4% to 37.6%, flipping that district from red to blue. And oftentimes you'll see, you know, some kind of candidates, they'll play their views a little close to the vest in some of these districts. And they'll be like, ah, you know, if I, if I speak too much about this issue or that issue, you know, 
uh, maybe the voters aren't going to want it because, you know, it's a more moderate district or it leans right. And maybe that'll hurt me with voters. Well, that's the opposite of what happened with here. Lands ran on a platform that emphasized protecting abortion rights and IVF. We all remember what happened with IVF, particularly in Alabama recently, that probably also encouraged this blue wave of voters. This was a Trump plus one district, and Lanz was a candidate in the last election. She lost in 2022. She recently lost by like five or six or seven. I, I got to look it up, but she lost by not like a tiny, tiny bit. She, she mm -hmm. lost by a, a fair amount. And the Republican who ended up winning that race in 2022, guess, guess what happened to that Republican? <laughs> got indicted for... Drum roll, please. Come on. Voter fraud. Because Come as on. we always see, it's always projection from the Republican Party. And another point I want to make before I finish talking about this particular race is the polls that came out around this race and the data that people were going off. And that's why these polls I really hate. And that's why I much prefer to look at what is the hard data of the elections? What are the votes? Show me what the votes are. Show me what people are saying on election day, okay? The internal polls from December for this race from the Republican campaign had the Republican winning 47.7% to 36.8%. So they had the Republican winning by like 10 or 11 points. Remember, the Democrat won by 25. 25. Even the Democrats' internal polling, it had her winning. But it had her just up 3%. It had her up 43 to 40. And so you figure the internal polls are probably a bit more favorable to the candidate who is conducting those polls. But in both situations, you saw just the, the both polls just completely off, nowhere near it. And that's why, you know, when you see all these pundits go on TV, and, and you saw this in 2022 also, and you see, you know, I think just, I think the American people have forgotten about this abortion issue. I think they don't really care much about this IVF issue. It's like, Really? Because every election we see, the data suggests the exact opposite. The data suggests that Americans are not getting over this power grab anytime soon. And you even have Fox News, I don't know if they release these polls as like a warning <laughs> to, to their own party, but even a new Fox News poll showed record levels of support for abortion rights. And I'm surprised they even published this. It's the highest ever, the highest ever recorded levels of support for abortion rights with 59% of Americans saying abortion should be legal always or most of the time. For comparison, that number was 44% in this poll in April 2022 before Roe was overturned. Only 7% of respondents said abortion should never be allowed. The majority of the voters oppose both six-week and 15-week bans on abortion. And you see Republicans trying to be like, oh, wait, no, we, we, we don't want a full ban. We just want to ban after this amount of weeks or that amount of weeks or this amount of weeks. And you have the American people saying, let women control their bodies. Let this decision be between a woman and her a woman and her doctor, and stop getting a politician. We don't want Ted Cruz in that conversation. Okay, we don't want Donald Trump in that conversation. And I think we're going to continue to see the effects of them overturning Roe, of these attacks on IVF, which they, which they just recently put in their budget policy for this Republican study, which comprises eighty percent of the House Republicans as to what their plans are. If they get the presidency, they want to continue to ban these things. They want to continue to take away people's freedoms. That's just the fact. I mean, they're admitting to it. I think we're seeing an uprising of voters. And I think we're seeing again that once again, November is coming this November. In Remember, right, you, know what I say? you know what I say to Alabama? Row tide. Row tide, Brett. Row tide. Row tide. I like that. I like that. And we have Rovember, but but look, you know, again, it's always the hypocrisy. It's always the lies. It's always the gaslighting. When we saw the mayor of Baltimore too, one of the things he also talked about is just like the lack of courage of these MAGAs who also hide behind these labels because they're too cowardly to actually say what they actually mean because they know their ideas are despicable, racist, wildly unpopular. So they don't even stand, they don't even act like they stand with the ideas. They try to like hide it and sneak it. And it's just like all this like sneaky people. It's like, stop being sneaky. <laughs> and like, remember even with IVF, remember what the Republicans were saying? They were like, we wholeheartedly will, you know, we support it. We want to introduce legislation in the House and in the Senate. And we're going to quickly protect 
the right to an IVF because the Alabama Supreme Court made the ruling that um, frozen embryos have the same rights as children. And if that's the classification of what a frozen embryo is, that is why the Dobbs decision overturning Roe v. Wade then basically opens up the floodgates where you can say a frozen embryo has the same rights of children. So if anything happens to it, you can be charged with murder. And so the way you would actually deal with that is pass legislation that says a frozen embryo is not a child, right? That, that, that's how you would do it. And then that avoids all of the issues. So Democrats tried to do that and say, no, we need to make it very clear that a frozen embryo is not. Meanwhile, the MAGA Republicans and a lot, mostly all of them, all the MAGA Republicans in the House and in the Senate have supported legislation that very specifically says in the legislation that's out there that frozen embryos are children. Like if they, That's what they have in the legislation that they've wanted to pass. Their names are signed to these things. So when Democrats like Senator Duckworth introduced legislation that said, OK, let's deal with the issue. Any objections? Let's do this by unanimous consent. What happened? Objection. One of the Republicans objected to it, and they stopped that from being passed because they're a bunch of liars. They are coming for IVF. They are coming for contraception. And the same way you watch every night, you know, where Hannity tries to like, not tries, comes up with all of the lies, but tries to scare, you know, the viewers. They're coming for your gas stoves. They're coming for this. They're just, just making up false things. Can, can, can we play that? Us, they are actually, the MAGA Republicans are quite literally coming for your rights. Sean Hannity wants to be in your bedroom. Donald Trump wants to be in your bedroom. They want to be making the medical decisions for you. They are. They've taken away your reproductive rights. They're going to take away IVF access. They are going to take away contraception. Moving to the economy, they are going to take away your social security. They are going to raise the retirement age. They are coming for you. And if it was up to them, they would have child labor. They would have no minimum wage at all. They certainly don't want to raise the minimum wage. They want to pay people nothing at all for, for their labor. And they want to scam, scam, scam like Donald Trump. And they think that Trump is their path towards scamming their way to millions and billions. And folks, all of that apparatus, though, is also then built on the type of stochastic terrorism that we talked about at the outset of this show. And even before we went live tonight, what was going on? Donald Trump posting more things about Justice Juan Mershon's daughter, calling out her specific name in the new posts so that people could go after her. What type of people could go after her? We've been focusing on extremism here and the threats of extremism on the Midas Touch Network. It's why it's been an honor to co-produce a new movie that is coming out called Against All Enemies. And it comes out tomorrow, if you're listening to this on audio for the first time, it comes out today. It comes out March 29th. It's an award-winning documentary called Against All Enemies, which we co-produced here at the Midas Touch Network. Again, available in the U.S. on March 29th in select theaters and on major streaming platforms. Just search for Against All Enemies. Amazon and Apple TV. That's where you go because you got, got, got to be specific then. Amazon and Apple TV. You got to go there. That's where you'll find. Look up Against All Enemies, March 29th. This Let's movie, go. is it's it's really good. It's All really, right. really good. Let's show you the full trailer, Midas Mighty. I really want you all to watch this film the day it comes out, March 29th. Watch it, download it. Let's get it to the top of all of the charts the same way our pod. This is big for us to do a movie like this. The website is againstallenemiesfilm.com if you want to know more. But tomorrow, go on Amazon or Apple TV, search Against All Enemies. Here's the trailer, folks. Three, two, one. There are places in our military where we are trained to start and fuel insurgencies. That's the same kind of they've been doing their whole career. Now they're doing it here inside the United States. Anybody who says that this can't happen in a worse way, either they're ignorant or they're part of the problem. 
Today, domestic terrorism is the greatest terrorist threat facing the United States. The CIA has this tool where they measure levels of insurgency, and if you just apply the tool to the U.S., we are in an incipient insurgency. Do you want your house back? Take it! How did I end up on one side of that door, and my fellow veterans, how did they end up on the other side of that door? If you believe the country is under attack, you have a certain set of skills, you're a force multiplier. It's going to end up the people versus the government. If you're armed, then you're prepared to defend your family. If you're not armed, you're dog meat. When you can convince people that their leaders are not valid, then you give them the excuse to overthrow that leadership. And that's not new. The issue is, is that the people that we are identifying as extremists, they're identifying as patriots or freedom fighters. It almost sounds like I'm talking about terrorism right now. Everyone becomes more violent in the aftermath of warfare. What we don't know is what happens when we're talking about a 20-year war. I hope that people are f***ing scared because being scared motivates people. This is how countries fall apart. Oh my God! I could see a civil war. And this fight that's far from over, and it may never be over. I, Stanley with Lisa Fon, do solemnly I swear to the, the, the Constitution of the United States, States. against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. So help me God. So help me so God. So help me God. Against All Enemies, out March 29th on Amazon or Apple TV. And please leave five star reviews or whatever the top review you're allowed to give on those streaming platforms that helps those algorithms and wouldn't it be so cool if the Midas Touch Network we as a community could get our very first movie that we all made together number one on the charts again against all enemies we hope you enjoyed that trailer I want to give a special hat tip to some of our other uh, YouTube partnerships. Our newest YouTube partnership is True Crime MTN. David Arenberg is leading that channel. Let's try to get that channel to 50,000 subscribers. Then we've got Tennessee Brando's channel. Love Tennessee Brando. His takes are incredible. Let's try to get Tennessee Brando to two. 100,000 YouTube subscribers. Then we have our Gen Z correspondent, Adam Mockler. That's a rocket ship, that channel. Just search Adam Mockler on YouTube. Let's get that channel to 200,000 subscribers. And then we've got Talking Feds. Let's get that to 200,000 subscribers as well. Just search Adam Mockler, search Tennessee Brando, search True Crime MTN, search Talking Feds. All partners with the Midas Touch Network, subscribe to all. And that expansion right there is thanks to you. Not only do we thank Salty at the end of our episodes now, but we also thank Jeremy. We also thank Sydney. We also thank Hayden. We thank our incredible editorial team led by Ron Filipkowski. Folks, this is growing brick by brick thanks to you. We don't have billions of dollars like Fox and funding, but we've got the Midas Mighty, the most powerful force in pro-democracy media right here. And the jet fuel for that are these emojis, <laughs> the emojis, <that's> true. <laughs> the emojis right it. here on our, on, on our YouTube that helps grow the patreon.com, which we're going to be speaking at. So you join that, you get to meet us. It also goes a very long way to support the network, patreon.com slash Midas Touch. That's the jet fuel right there. Our pro-democracy sponsors, thank you to all of you. And of course, we also thank you, the Midas Mighty. None of this would possible. None of this would be possible without you. We thank you, our incredible mods. What great moderators we have. We're grateful for the hard work that you put in as well. We're thankful for all of our producers as well. If you want to become an honorary producer, you do that also at patreon.com slash Midas Touch. So now is the time for you to go to patreon.com slash Midas Touch, subscribe, click the secret link, join us on a Zoom chat. I'm so excited to meet you. We'll see you soon. Patreon.com slash Midas Touch. Jordy, take it away.
Shout out to the Midas Mighty! The Midas Mighty standing strong Against the fascists we sing our song We will get it right whenever It's Ken Harbaugh with the Midas Touch Network. The film Against All Enemies, which I co-produced with Ben Micellis and this network, has won awards around the world for its up-close portrayal of America's insurrectionist movement. It premieres in the U.S. on March 29th on Amazon and Apple TV. Go to AgainstAllEnemiesFilm.com or click the link below. But don't just watch Against All Enemies. Tell your friends about it. It's one more way to hold accountable those who threaten our democracy. Thanks, Midas Mighty. Let's use our power well.